Let's talk a little bit about another approach to figuring out whether a formula is valid than just the truth table rules, and that is trying to come up with some kind of a proof system that enables you to derive or prove that a formula is valid. So the way that we would try to do that is uh, usually by having some set of axioms that we start off with and then some set of so-called deduction rules, which have the property that when you have a, they tell you how given a bunch of formulas, you can add additional formulas to your system. So the idea is that if you've got some valid axioms and then your deduction rules are okay, then you can apply them to the axioms and get more formulas, and then you can apply the rules to the more formulas you got. Keep going, and then you're going to generate lots of formulas, and you'd hope that they'll all be valid, and in fact, that every possible valid formula would appear. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So a system for proving formulas is said to be sound. That's just a jargon word. And it, by the way, it's not the same in all subdisciplines and in all books, but it's pretty common to call the following system sound when every provable formula is valid. Every formula that the system claims is a theorem or can be uh, proved by its rules is supposed to be a valid formula. Now, basically, <laughs> if you have an un unsound proof system, you're not going to you're going to throw it away because you don't want a proof system that's proving stuff that can't be counted on. Uh, so uh, you get to a certain point where you hardly ever bother to mention that your proof system is sound because that's taken for granted. You wouldn't be interested in it if, if it wasn't sound. Um, but for today, let's not take it for granted and have this word to consider uh, a, an important property of a proof system. Now, uh, there are several well-known propositional proof systems that uh, have an interesting property. They have a handful of axioms that are, in fact, valid, um, which can be checked easily enough by truth tables. They don't have that many variables. And they just have one proof rule, a very basic and sort of obvious proof rule called modus ponens. So the modus ponens rule says that if you've proved P, and you have proved P implies Q, then from that you can deduce Q. So the, um, uh, the, rules abo the, the formulas above this line are called the antecedents of the rule, and this single formula below the rule is called the conclusion. And again, so the idea is that I'm proving a whole bunch of formulas, and if I find among my formulas something that I'll call P, and another formula that's of the form P implies something, call it Q, then I can deduce, having proved these two, that I can add Q to my collection of provable formulas. So <laughs> the way you get sound proof systems typically is by having sound rules that add more formulas to your set of formulas. So the definition of a sound rule is that it preserves validity. That is, if all of the antecedents are valid, then the conclusion should be valid. And again, this is a property of a rule that you would hardly mention because it's taken for granted or it wouldn't consider it to be a useful proof rule. But let's be careful and verify that modus ponens, in fact, is a sound rule. So what we're claiming, in other words, is that if P is valid and the implication P implies Q is valid, then in fact Q must be valid. So it's okay to deduce Q when you've proved P and P implies Q. So how, we, how do we prove that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're looking at behavior of formulas in all truth assignments. That's what valid means. So let's suppose that I have some truth assignment A and that P, one of the formulas in the antecedents, is true under this tru uh, truth assignment. Let's also assume that P implies Q is true for this particular assignment A. Well, then by truth tables, we know that Q has to be true for A because that's the, the definition of, uh, of when the implies gets to be true. In order for the implies to be true, when P is true, Q has to be true. So uh, that truth table reasoning allows us to conclude that, true, uh, that Q is true. But now look, um, P and P implies Q are valid, which means they're true for every possible assignment A, and therefore Q must also be true for every possible A, which is to say that Q is valid. End of proof. 
Um, I'm belaboring this just to kind of remind you of the definitions. Uh, a lot of people would just consider it kind of a no-brainer that you look at modus ponens and you realize, of course, that's a sound rule. Okay, so we have this concept of provable formulas, and the typical way you get them is you start with axioms, and then you derive more formulas by repeatedly applying the proof rules to previously de derived formulas, which is what I said at the beginning. So this is a typical kind of proof system where you, you just uh, keep applying proof rules to get, generate more and more things called theorems. The provable formulas are called theorems, and uh, if the whole thing is sound, then the, all of those derived formulas are gonna be valid. So uh, we have what is actually a kind of a trivial theorem, but I'm going to state it as a theorem. Namely, if I have rules that are sound, meaning that they preserve validity, and I have axioms that are valid, then guess what? Everything that's provable is valid. How could it be otherwise? Because I have valid stuff and I'm adding a rule that only adds valid stuff when it's applied to valid stuff, so it's all valid. In other words, the system, the whole system is sound. So if I'm trying to make an overall conclusion that everything provable is valid, if I have only uh, sound rules and valid axioms, I win. My system's okay. Now, the other more interesting and more difficult property of proof systems is that they are complete. So a proof system is complete when every valid formula is provable. Um, again, if it's not sound, then it's pretty easy to make it complete because it typically can prove everything. So we're, it, we're, it goes kind of without saying again that completeness is only interesting for sound systems, but it's very interesting for sound systems. Um, and it turns out for propositional logic that the uh, the sound systems that I mentioned before earlier that have a few axioms and then their sole rule is modus ponens are in fact complete. Now, I'm not going to prove that, we're not going to prove that, but it's kind of good culture to know about that. Uh, and we'll also be talking a little bit about this issue in the context of predicate calculus, which will be taking up mo any moment. Um, but uh, let's just remark that uh, without going into the details of proof systems, section 3.4 of the text and accompanying MITx slides, and this is optional this term, it's been covered in other terms, describe a complete proof system, a proof system that proves all valid formulas that's based on kind of algebraic manipulation of equivalences between formulas. Um, so uh, that is elaborated, both the definition of the system and how you use it and why it's complete, uh, is demonstrated in section 3.4 for your information, but you're not going to be held responsible for it this term. Uh, there's also an optional set of slides, no video, uh, on the MITx site for, uh, out uh, for February 21st uh, called Propositional Logic, and that describes one of these uh, very elegant and minimal uh, complete proof systems whose only uh, rule is modus ponens. For simplicity, that rule confines itself to proving implications, uh, but since you can in fact use implications to express in fact anything, you can express and and or and not in terms of implications, uh, you really have a very general system for proving validity. So it's complete for the kind of formulas it's considering, namely formulas that are implies formulas. Uh, but Although in many cases having proof rules that enable you to prove a formula is valid gives you a much quicker demonstration that the formula is valid than you would you certainly get by truth tables. In general, the proof systems blow up the same way truth tables do. That no known proof system really is uh, uh, any better than, uh, than, tru than a truth table uh, application on uh, uh, arbitrary formulas. There's a lot of formulas where they'll do well on, but if you give it, if you ask, well, how does it behave on some nasty formula, say, that somebody picks out, and logicians know how to pick out such nasty formulas, the proof systems all blow up, and they require a length of proof that's exponential in the number of variables, just the way truth tables grow. Um, so it's just emphasizing a thing that's been mentioned in the text, which is that there is no efficient method for verifying validity or satisfiability for that matter. So validity and SAT remain difficult even when you've got a proof system that you think is pretty nice and powerful.